Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another video. Now, guys, I am a little bit late on this. However, I still want to cover it. And that is the fact that the IRS has updated their 2025 active income bracket. So I would like to cover this. And of course, how this actually correlates to investing, specifically the type of investing that I like to do, which is dividend investing. So before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as one more. Make sure to follow us on the XFL Investor. Like, join us on Discord, which is the best way to catch the videos, live streams, as well as shorts the link is in the description below for that one so with that said let's get started with this video so here we have it guys the irs announces 2025 income tax brackets updated standard deduction now i am a little bit late on this you know this was done as of about a month ago october 22nd this was when this was uh, done however i still would like to take a look at it and let's compare the 2024 to that of the 2025 so Starting off, we got 2024 for married filing jointly, 10% from 0 to 23,200, and then 2025, they're increasing it by around 600 bucks or so from 0 to $23,850. So this increase is actually very, very well appreciated because it means that it'll incorporate a lot more people into the lower tax brackets. Then for the 12%, it is between 23,201 to 94,300 for 2024 and 2025. This is now 23,851 to 96,950. So basically anywhere within that um, kind of range, you will now have to pay 12% when it comes to uh, income taxes in 2025. Then $94,301 to $201,050 for 2024 land to at the 20 percent and now this 20 percent it is 96 thousand so this is an increase of two thousand dollars really really nice ninety six thousand nine hundred and fifty one dollars to two hundred and six thousand and seven hundred dollars then the 24 percent we got two hundred and one thousand fifty one dollars so three hundred eighty three thousand nine hundred dollars in 2024 and then 2025 two hundred and six thousand seven hundred one dollars to three hundred and ninety four thousand six hundred dollars you guys can see the rest just keep increasing a lot more and more uh the higher this goes it's funny because like the higher this goes the much more um increment of that lower of that lower percentile actually increased by as you can see here for the 10 percent uh well it's basically zero but for the highest one here it only increased by around like 600 bucks or so and then for the lowest range for the 12 percent increase by roughly 600 dollars or so once again but then by the time you get to the 35 percent this thing increased by oh man what is that fourteen thousand right fourteen thousand fifteen thousand dollars uh on the lower percentile so that pretty much does it for the married filing jointly but let's also take a look at the singles and then if if you're single we can see that in 2024 the highest percentile was up to 11,600 and now it's up to 11,925 then for the 12 percent it was between 11,601 to 47,150 to now in 2025 almost 12,000 so 11,926 to 48,475 and then at the 22 percent we got 47,151 dollars to 100,525 dollars to now 48,000 Four hundred and seventy-six dollars, two hundred and three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars, and you guys can see the rest just shows itself right over there. And of course, we have to take all of this with a grain of salt because, if you guys remember, Donald Trump is now president. Well, I guess he's not technically president, like, but Donald Trump did win the presidency on November fifth. And one of the things that he said prior to him winning was, especially he said this on Joe Rogan. I'm pretty sure he did it on Twitter as well or X as well. He says he wants to completely eliminate the income tax and replace it with tariffs. Trump doubles down on replacing income taxes with tariffs in Joe Rogan interview. So the thing with this is that you really can't do that. And I put a short saying, you know, three things that I really do hope that Trump does. And one of them was eliminate the income tax. However, it is codified in the Constitution. And if we take a look at the actual language for this, as per the 16th Amendment, Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on income. Now, the main key thing to take away from this is the shall part, because shall it is a demand, right? It is a command that it must do it. Very, very similar to, and I'm going to digress here, very, very similar to the 
may issue concealed carry licenses when it comes to states or shall issue, right? Shall issue is the state has to give it to you, has to give you a concealed carry license for your firearms if you are not a convicted felon. And may issue is that they have the option to or not. But we can see here that the language specific to the 16th Amendment, it is shall. So I don't necessarily know how to circumvene this at all or even if he can however what it doesn't do is mention a specific type of percent so for all we know this right here what trump wanted to do could easily just come up to be okay since we can't get rid of the income tax then you know what let's just make it a flat one percent tax across the board something that people won't even feel and if that were to occur, all of these numbers that you guys see right over here will become null and void. Now, when will this actually come into effect? I don't know, because these 2025 numbers will come into effect beginning of January. However, Trump gets into office January 20th. And let's say that he they actually do manage to get this 1% done or whatever it may be, how this new income tax will be. It will essentially be for... 2026 which would mean it'll affect you in 2027 so it's whatever he does it'll be a long long time till that happens right you know three or even four years down the line depending on how fast they actually get this done but nonetheless so this is the new tax brackets for active income now if you guys know me here on the channel you'll know that i'm not a fan of active income i do prefer passive income instead and the goal should be for watching this the goal should be to eventually switch everything over from active income to passive income because it does have a lot more uh financial benefits to them and of course we're going to be taking a look at the dividend tax rate for 2025 again guys my favorite thing to do is dividends and they have a lot of good tax benefits here when it comes to them. It does require a decent amount to be invested, but again, it's not wasting it, right? People have this idea that like, oh, when you spend it on stocks, you are, you're wasting money. No, you are essentially having your money work for you where your money can work indefinitely, whereas you can only work at so many hours of the day and Let's face it, time is your most valuable resource. You can't take that back, right? You absolutely can't. You can always make more money, but you can't take it back. So when looking at the dividend tax rate for 2025, this is specifically, guys, for qualified dividends. There's two types of dividends, non-qualified and qualified. Qualified is dividends that come from companies that aren't REITs, real estate investment trusts. So your Apples, your Chevrons, your NVIDIAs, even though that's barely a dividend, but you get my point. Any dividend that comes from those types of companies are qualified dividends. And dividends that come from REITs, real estate investment trusts, are non-qualified dividends. And that is because, by law, REITs have to give out, I believe, 90% of all profits in the form of a dividend, which is usually why their dividend yield is really, really high, upwards of like 4, 5, 6%. So understand that REIT dividend income is taxed at basically this income over here right this tax rate whereas the qualified one is taxed at here so looking at this tax bracket for 2025 we can see that um well if you're married filing jointly guys to the first ninety six thousand seven hundred dollars you pay zero whereas we could see over here let's take ninety six thousand seven hundred bucks if we take a look over here um this lands you at the 12 percent so Right then and there, you are now paying zero. So basically, if you make $95,000 in dividends, you are paying zero, whereas somebody here would be paying 12%. And even if you're filing single, we can see that to the first $48,350, you're still paying zero in comparison to this. And if you're filing single, we can see that even if you are making that $47,000, you are still paying 12%. So Right, right then and there, dividends are very, very well taxed. And we can see that when it comes to Mary filing jointly, guys, $600,000 in annual income and in, through dividends or more gets taxed at 20% while the same kind of metric gets taxed at 37, 35%, right? Between 35 and 37%, depending on where your income is. So 20% compared to 37%, that is a 17% difference, which is 
absolutely mind boggling absolutely mind boggling so there you guys have it as to why i'm constantly harping about passive income and as to why i believe that most of you guys should begin if you're watching this should begin a dividend portfolio it's not going to be overnight right it really isn't going to be overnight but slow and steady always wins the race but now, unfortunately, I do have to bring in some unfortunate news. And that is the fact that in order to get this kind of passive income, it requires a whole lot of money. It really, really does uh, to be invested. Now, in some of these lifetime, they will make more than this. However, most people tend to spend this and don't tend to invest it. But if they were to invest it, yeah, you it's actually really not a lot of money in retrospect. So let's take a look at the dividend ETF. SCHD. And let's take a look at the overall dividend yield for this ETF at 3.39% as of uh, November 19, 2024. So let's say that we want to make that $90,000 in passive income just by this ETF. Okay. So if we got $90,000, right, we take $90,000, this is a year, and then we divide this by this 0.03 uh, three nine percent. Oh, sorry, my, my bad. My bad. Point oh three three nine percent. This will give us the amount of money that we need to invest to get that ninety thousand dollars. And unfortunately, it is upwards of two point six five million dollars. Yeah. Normally, people would see this number and would be like, "That is way too much." Right? That's a really, really overwhelming number. In retrospect, though, it really isn't a lot. Most people make this in their lifetime. And not to mention that it's not just you. The more you invest into dividend companies, the companies will pay you back. And then you can just take that dividend and reinvest it. So that way your dividends actually grow even more, right? Similar to the debt snowball that, that Dave Ramsey has. This is the dividend snowball. It's the opposite. So the paying down debt, now you're building income. So it really does help. If you put in $2,000 every month, then by the time that company that you put in that money, uh, you know, back three months ago, now pays you, let's just say 30 bucks the following quarter. Now you're not putting in $2,000, you're putting in $2,030. So it does help a little bit to go up. And also assuming that companies fall, ETFs fall, markets fall, then if you keep buying during downturns, your money will go much farther. So anyways, guys, that's really is all I wanted to cover. I know I uh, kind of just went on a completely different tangent there, covered a lot of stuff in this video, mainly when it comes to tax, but I love talking about taxes. It really is a fun topic for me. So hopefully y'all guys enjoyed. Hopefully this was insightful. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. We'll join us on Discord. The link is in the description below. So with that said, have a blessed day. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and peace out.